let's see two proofs of the Pythagorean theorem inspired by Euclid. Imagine that we have a right triangle with legs of length a and b and a hypotenuse of length c. We can draw a square off the leg of length a, and this square encloses an area of a times a, or a squared. Similarly, we can draw a square off the leg of length b, enclosing an area of b squared. We can also draw a square off the hypotenuse, and this has an area of c squared. In the pictured diagram, the shaded area is a squared plus b squared. Euclid realized that we can shear squares and we maintain the same area. We can also rotate shapes to maintain area. So if we shear both squares along the opposite leg of the triangle, rotate 90 degrees, and then shear again down this vertical line where they meet, we end up filling the c by c square off the hypotenuse. This means that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where a and b are the legs of a right triangle with hypotenuse c. This is essentially Euclid's proof of the Pythagorean theorem. The shearing and rotation proof also suggests a dissection proof of the Pythagorean theorem. We can cut the b by b square like this, so that the triangular region matches the original right triangle. We can rotate this shape down, and then use the triangle to cut this region into two shapes, dropping down this top pictured triangle here. We can also cut the a by a square like this, dropping this blue region down into the original triangle, and using the line shown here to cut another little piece to fill the last little triangular region here. We rotate 90 degrees and use the original triangle to create a new small triangle that then drops down into place in the c by c square. From this dissection proof, we see that a squared plus b squared equals c squared by cutting and moving pieces around. Let's see the original shearing and rotating proof one more time, where we shear and rotate both rectangles together. You tell me, do you like the shearing and rotating proof better, or do you prefer the dissection that it implies? Either way, it's nice to have multiple proofs of one fact, and it's amazing that Euclid's proof produces the dissection proof as well.